mayor giving us this proclamation. The Camby Garden Club has been active since the founding of the Northern Suburbs Club. Clips are showing pretty well right now, most of them. Unfortunately, they will fade a little bit, but the roses will be coming on. We hope to be able to continue this project, and um, one of our very active members, Sue Clonis, is with me tonight, and she is spearheading a lot of the club. So I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Very really appreciate it. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, it's nice to drive down the highway and see that. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into uh, communications. Anything right now, uh, Mr. Robinson? No? Nope. All right. Our first opportunity, again, uh, for citizen input and community announcements. So if you have anything that's a non-agenda item, you're more than welcome to fill out a yellow card. Located in the back there, hand it to Kim, and we'll give you your time to make an announcement or address the council. And I have one card, and that's Roger Steike. Hello, sir. How are you? Good evening. Good to see you again. I just have an additional six going back, so no spoiling the surprise. So, you know. <laughs> nope. Uh, Roger Steinke, 1547 South 1st Street. Um, I have to come to a city council meeting to somebody I've known for 25 years. Uh, Mr. Johnson, sitting by Cheryl, uh, I've known for over 25 years. The daughters played sports together, and uh, it's pretty sad that um, I don't work on keeping in touch on that. So, um, just wanted to give you my update. And so, I had a chance to meet with Mr. Brown, I mean, Brian, and a uh, very constructive meeting. So the first question that um, I shared with you guys a couple of weeks ago that I had was that uh, the planning commission, the planning staff um, talking about our property is uh, if they um, assumed that we were participating, you know, the kind of, about what was going on or if there was intent or if, or if the city was given intent that we were participating. So Mr. Brown said, uh, Stafford assured them that we were participating. So that's the way they proceeded. So um, he shared with me that if uh, he would have known that we weren't participating, that they would, the city would have, the planning staff would have approached this differently. So got my answer to that question. I want to kind of talk about customer service. I think this is the best way to, for me to phrase this. Mr. Brown said that this is kind of a mess. I agree. So I think sometimes when we do things and we have a, when there's a mess and you have customer service involved with it, sometimes there's a mess and you, you want to try and get it resolved. And sometimes you get great customer service. You know, there's a real easy, there's a, it can be a difficult answer, but it gets resolved. And that's a really good experience. I hope that we've all had that. I also think that at times when there's, a, there's something that happens and you try and address the situation, there's an acknowledgement that there's an issue. And it's like if you're at the store and the person goes in the back room and they don't come back out. And it's like they kind of want you to, they think that hopefully the resolution is if you leave. And that's kind of the feel, the experience that I feel I'm having right now is you know, I'm talking about stuff, I'm trying to you know, work through this, and uh, I'm just not getting much participation back on that. So I think that you know, there's still time for that, and uh, so uh, yeah, I'll still continue to work on that. Uh, the next um, planning commission meeting is Planning commission meetings you know, have been canceled because there's been nothing on the agenda, which is great. They get to stay home for that night. But that's when I was gonna do like my three minute little reports out, report outs to them like I've been doing with you guys. And so um, I really need to figure out how to make myself on the agenda for not this Monday's meeting, but the one two weeks from now. So I'd like to kind of put a packet together and kind of talk about what's been going on because on June 11th, I believe, there is a 
um, it will be the vote on the variance with the back pond development. So I just, there's been a lot of stuff going on with us, and so I just want to be able to talk with them, share what's going on, because there won't be very much time to discuss it, discuss what's been going on in that meeting. So I'd like to uh, be able to go to a meeting before then, and then, you know, talk. <laughs> Asthma, sorry. Um, to go through that. So I just need to figure out how to, you know, what I need to do to put a packet together and to hopefully get on the agenda. Okay. So, um, before you look at page four, is uh, a couple of meetings ago, the night that it was annexed, um, when they were talking about the Beck development, some pictures were being shown. Uh, one thing that Mr. Brown and I talked about when we were at the meeting, when I met with them a week ago, was uh, different options about property. And there's some access stuff with it, because last time I was here, I talked about 15th loop possibility, that being a solution. So during the discussion, the night of the annexation, there was a concept that was shown of townhouses or attached housing and uh, affordable housing issue. Everyone had a little, there was a lot of interest in that. So um, that was displayed and shown on our property, not on the Beck Pond property. So, trying to talk to Mr. Brown about trying to come up with some kind of concept for the pro my property and everything. Uh, I have a friend who's a builder in Idaho. He was in town over the weekend. And uh, so page four, he just put a little something together. It was something just visible. Me coming here and talking about something is, is pretty difficult and a piece of paper with a Sharpie is not a very good picture or description of that. So some of this is to scale, is uh, 15th loop, or the two, two lots, uh, that's 54 feet across for the lots, that would be an actual street. Um, he put some stuff in there for the houses. Um, we talked about streets, and what I would need to do is do a computer generated drawing. That costs money. And if I have to pay for that, that's fine. But I'm trying to have something a little bit more concrete to display on this. And so that's kind of in the situation that I'm in right now is I need something a little more concrete on that. So I just wanted to bring this tonight just so you'd have a visual. I'm still trying to you know work through this. And uh, that's it. I'm going to blame this on Mr. Johnson. He was a distraction tonight. So anyway, that's all. I just wanted to give you the update. I'll contact Mr. Brown you know, about getting on the agenda in two weeks. Uh, wanted to like show you I'm still working on this, you know, show you something visible and stuff. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> you. you want me to take the stuff or do you want to keep anything or? Oh, I have a I have a Roger Stanky file now at home, so yeah. I'm going to have it. Is that one? No, it is not actually. <laughs> so so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Take that over to. Yeah, do you want to take that to Kim there? She'll quickly. I'm Sue Clonus. I'm new to Canby from Missouri and have been very active in all the garden clubs I've ever been in. So we worked in Missouri with um, MoDOT and got a lot of stuff done. Mm -hmm. So I contacted ODOT and they're just tickled pink to get some stuff on there. So anyway, but what I'm very briefly gonna say, because of our birthday, we are having a tea party and only 60 people can come. So I'm expecting all you guys and your, and your wives and husbands to come in July and I have a, a, a brochure to show you and give you because we're uh, going to advertise, we're advertising at Gwen's and I know all of you go in there and we're gonna sell tickets at Cutsforth and we're going to have a display next week for our proclamation uh, at the library here. So we're really, really gung-ho about being 70. So 
anyway, it's just, it's just a pleasure. I love Canby. I love your rain. It's not humid like Missouri. I'm from the St. Louis area, so you're not going to get rid of me. You're going to see me a lot, a lot of it. So, may I leave one of these? With yes, uh, Sue. Thank before you. before you get up. Yes. What's the date of the event? Um, July the 22nd, okay. from two to five. It's going to be at uh, Louise and Dave. Um, golly, I don't know. We call her Wheezy. She's got a beautiful, it's 20 acres or so out of on 170 that okay. is just exquisite. And it, this is a picture of her gazebo and stuff. She's got a koi pond, and we're just ecstatic that we're, and we might do this every year. So, anyway. Is that a copy that we can have? Yes, sir. If you will leave that with Kim, Kim will scan it and email it out to all of us. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if Thank I could you. make yes. a comment to Sue as yes. well. Uh, I, I say this to all of our, our new uh, people who come to town. Uh, please let us know when you see things that don't make sense. Um, it, 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 you quickly become habituated to things and say, oh, well, that's, that's the way it is. So really, in, in, in the first couple of years that you're here, let us know if there are things that you've seen elsewhere that have worked. Uh, and the same way, a, a good example is with ODOT. I mean, a number of us for a number of years were told, it doesn't do any good to talk to them. They'll never let you do anything with right away. Don't even bother. So we need people like you with fresh eyes. Well, I'd like to do something with that booster area, the Canby booster thing. It just needs, it needs some help. And we're going to take a, a project each year and work on it. And we've applied for a grant with the Hardy Plant Society for $1,000. We put in 500 and it's a lot of work for us to come up with $500 because we're an aging group. So we would like to have more. The commercial businesses are starting to join with us. The Rotary is joining with us. The Chamber, uh, you guys have all been great. So I just, you'll be hearing a lot from us. And we have, uh, we're on Facebook, so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sue, appreciate Thank you, Sue. that. Appreciate that. All right, uh, moving into mayor's business. Uh, a list for you guys, I'm excited. Um, so parks, I'll come back to. Uh, just for the community, tomorrow is shred day at the fairgrounds. So if you've got large boxes, small boxes of paperwork that you wanna get rid of and watch it shredded, because your shredder at home doesn't keep up with the amount of stuff, bring it on down to the uh, fairgrounds and Kahoot Shred Truck will be out there. They'll be taking that, they'll be scrubbing computers, taking some electronics, um, and I, I lost the track of the time. Does anybody know the time? Uh, noon, noon to four. Is noon to four, I think, has been the, is the case. So, I'm seeing Chief Davis nodding affirmatively that it is noon to four. Uh, budget meetings for the city are underway. We had our first kind of intro budget meeting last week. Uh, the following dates are uh, the set dates for our next meetings. The first official um, start of going through the budget is May 10th, and that. Council President Dale is at six. It is at six. Six o'clock on May 10th. The second meeting is May 17th, also at six o'clock here in the chambers. And then third and final uh, budget meeting, if we need it, will be May 24th at six o'clock. So mark your calendars, come down, have a read, hang out with us, uh, and go through the budget. Um, some fun conversation that I got to be a part of this week. I will pass out and share with all of you. We'll go that way and we'll go that way. First piece coming around and Thank Rick uh, helped me fill in any gaps. Um, so we had a meeting with county staff about the uh, Canby Ferry feasibility study. Uh, about a week ago, it was la last week, I think. Um, and so what I've just passed out around the council is just a look at uh, what the county is uh, looking at. Um, so many of you know that Canby Ferry costs the county um, every year about, we're being told it's pushing almost a million dollars a year in operating costs uh, to maintain the ferry. Um, 
And so they're looking at doing a study, not looking at it's scheduled, it's already gonna happen in terms of what can be some other options. So as you see there in the middle, um, alternatives to be studied, is it um, just gonna continue just the ferry? We do the ferry and the bridge. Is there just gonna discontinue the Canby Ferry and just add a bridge? Continue the Canby Ferry and add a bridge with a toll? <laughs> Um, or is it going to be discontinue the Canby Ferry and add a bridge with a toll? So um, reason being, again, is another access point across the river, um, and really, truly, it's just the operating cost of, of the ferry. Um, so they are looking at, so the process is they're going to be doing, um, the Board of County Commissioners are going to be, have already signed off on this, it's about $79,000 for the study um, and that they're looking at ana uh, the analysis period is gonna be traffic or what would be coming, potentially coming across the river from the year 2025 to the year 2055. Um, so then from there, there'll be just a lot of outreach after that coming across. So the second page, um, just again, a breakdown of the things that they're gonna look at. Uh, in the analysis of the feasibility study. So um, there will be two public events. Um, the first one will be here and coming up in June. Um, when we get that date, we'll let you know. Uh, the second one tentatively is set for October where they should hopefully have the results of the, of the feasibility study. Um, they're gonna be taking it to the Board of County Commissioners in November. Um, they are, like I said, they already have the consultant already on contract and um, yeah, so they're, that's kind of already underway. So I just wanted you all to be aware of that. We don't know what the fee is gonna be if they toll it. Is it gonna be peak pricing? It, that's what the feasibility study will tell them. Um, the bridge will go from, uh, will be high enough for, uh, if, for boat traffic, if, depending on how the waterway continues to be used. Um, if you start to see more traffic moving up and down the river. So uh, did they, Rick, I can't remember if they gave us a cost estimate. Wasn't it like 30? Yeah, they didn't have a definite cost estimate yet, but it was in the-, the Ten, Tens of millions? Yeah, tens yeah. of millions. Mm -hmm. um, and because of it potentially having the toll component, them able to bond for it and pull the trigger to get it done, uh, you know, definitely moves it up on, on a timeline, but it's still probably 10, 15 years out or more. So I just wanted you all to know about that piece. And then following that conversation was a conversation about the Arnt Road extension. So I'll let that go around. What's that? Oh, you're full of handouts tonight, aren't yeah. Visual aids. Don't say I never gave you anything. <laughs> um, so uh, the Art Road extension, if you look at the other page there, the, so I got a beautiful color copy, but so originally, so this is the original, the dark line on there is the original path that we are looking at for the extension. So it would extend Burke Parkway over, basically over the railroad tracks, over the gully, swing over to connect the third and send it over to the Malala River past the PD and then tie into um, Arnt Road and try to make a better connection, pull uh, truck traffic out of that industrial park that direction instead of bringing it through downtown uh, and also alleviate Barlow and 99E's uh, intersection, that exchange there. Originally, so that was the original plan. There was a counter plan that was put forward that would bring the Arnt Road piece and tie it into 99E between the bridge and Barlow Road. Um, but that required it going through um, right, I think about the middle of Canby Ford right. and um, the powers that be at the county finally heard us saying, no, that won't work. Um, you can't do that, Canby Ford will probably need to stay. So, um, so they're back to um, the original plan. The big piece is, is that um, we were able to get the goal exception 
So with it being so, Rick, this, this is where I might need you to explain a little bit greater detail. But because that is EFU and it's designated rural, sorry, yeah, rural reserve, um, you can't put roadway in rural reserve. But we've been able to get the extension that would waive that. So now that will allow us to put that put a road through that land into tie into our road. So um, the county is they did this. Not this last, the short session, but in the long session, uh, move this up in their transportation plan as to being one of the third projects that, number three on their project list of important pieces for the county. Now, that's great, it's number three, but it's behind um, I-205 expansion and Sunrise Corridor phase three. And they're still trying to finish phase two. So, tells you what three, being third on the list means in terms of time frame. So. There's been movement, which is great, um, but now with House Bill 2017 that did a lot of uh, that, the transportation funding package that was put together, stranger things happen, we don't know, but that could be a, a piece that comes up uh, in the near future. Hopefully, well, we've only been talking about it for 20, 20 years. years. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it'll be less than 20 more. So I will keep you all posted on that. Um, at C4, so Clackamas County Coordinating Committee, uh, we had a presentation from Metro about, sorry, uh, ODOT, uh, Oregon Department of Transportation, about the value pricing and tolling update. So they're looking at different options of tolling I-5 and I-205 for possible expansion pieces. Um, I, Based on the grilling that the gentleman from ODOT took from us. It was pretty brutal, I think yes. it was. Um, <laughs> he was not comfortable. He was not. Um, we, I, I'm not totally convinced that it's something that they're taking seriously um, because they, they don't include I-84 in any of it. They don't include 217. Um, there's not been a lot of conversation about what happens with um, the traffic deferral. So when people, so, if people are not going to go on the highway I-5 and I-205 during the tolling period, that means that more are going to be on 99E, McLaughlin Boulevard, et cetera. And so um, there has not been a lot of conversation on what that even looks like. So I I think it, a number of us, uh, the mayors talked afterwards and thought it was more of uh, ODOT going through a checklist that the legislature gave them. And so uh, the big piece being that to toll, to do a tolling lane on I-205 would require a fourth lane on 205. Well, we don't have a third lane in sections. And so the, the argument kept coming back was, well, are you gonna build the third lane and then build the fourth lane and toll that one? So then how do we pay for the third lane that we're supposed to have, have had 15 years ago, so, uh, and the gentleman from ODOT didn't have a lot of answers to the myriad of questions he was getting hammered with, so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, so just know that there's lots of fun dialogue on that. Um, Metro, uh, Metro Council is looking at a housing bond here in November. Um, so it'll be a, uh, out on the November ballot, and so they're targeting roughly about a half a billion dollars for um, affordable housing. Um, and based on the initial numbers, that would only address about 4% of the perceived need that Portland has. So they're revamping the numbers, and it may end up being a bigger bond than, than what they initially thought. Um, the question came up. Because on the heels of that, in May of 2019, Metro wants to come out with a transportation bond as well. And so Metro, we're not in Metro, doesn't necessarily affect us necessarily. However, um, it's definitely something that um, I've been watching and, and keeping an eye on and want to keep you all informed of. So if the, if the housing bond doesn't pass, they would bring it back around in May as well. So in May, so Metro basically reaches down to Oregon City, Wilsonville. That would be two bonds in May of next year, potentially. Um, so, but they're trying to figure out how to fund some affordable housing projects as well as transportation issues within 
the Portland metro area. Um, so tons more on that coming up. Um, congratulations to Jamie Stickle. Uh, our Main Street manager has been promoted to our economic development manager role. So she'll be, that officially takes place in, what's that? August 2nd. August 2nd. So congratulations when you see Jamie, congratulate her. She's got big shoes to fill, but I know she's up for the challenge. So, um, And so earlier tonight, uh, the City Council and the Park Advisory Board had a, an hour long, you waving at Sarah? No, oh, oh, no, actually, hello, sir. No, no, somebody walked by and waved at me. I was just being polite. <laughs> but I was like, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> no need to wait. <laughs> no, the um, left the library. Yeah. So uh, Park, Park Advisory Board and the City Council got together and spent an hour just kind of talking about uh, some of the pieces they want to be working on, what we want them to be working on. Um, and it was, they've got a new a couple new board members, a new board chair. Um, and so coming out of that meeting, I, I wanted feedback from the council on that meeting, number one, and number two, um, what next steps do we want to take as a council in regards to that meeting? I know it's vague for many at home, but I'm sure they'll get the gist here shortly. So I will open the floor to you so that we can keep the parks piece moving forward. Well, Mayor, I, since you mentioned that an hour ago at the, at the conclusion of the meeting, I've been thinking about that as well. And uh, I learned a lot from the uh, members of the Parks Advisory Committee. Um, so for me, it's going to take some mull time okay. to chew this over. Um, if it would be acceptable to you and the other council members of over the next week uh, sending you um, our thoughts That'll and work. maybe that could be assembled but I'm not sure uh, the time would be efficiently spent for us spitballing ideas here at the dais okay this marks twice this evening that I have agreed with Councilor Parker Show your microphone. Sorry. so I, I as you know this um, this council is uh, well half the council has been a noodler you know that so we, we do need time to to chew on it and um, give you feedback at a later date we did take in a lot of information tonight it was a good meeting as far as your feedback piece um, I thought it was a very well um, thought out meeting and I was glad to have that conversation um, looking forward to future conversations but yeah to, to uh, just give you spit out what I think next steps should be I'm not prepared to do that yet okay mr. mayor yes sir uh, I, I agree with that and I think in order to sort of really plan that out we'd need some more information so my request would be for you to have staff um, you know on standby to potentially be able to answer some questions I mean particularly when we were starting to crunch numbers on manpower per park and you know and what that would sort of estimate for the new parks you know sort of doing man hour budgeting for maintenance types things is going to be a high priority in analyzing you know our plans moving forward and, and it's math that maybe we could do if we look at enough documents ourselves but some of that is um, expertise from the from the staff and from the okay. so that would be helpful okay yeah. I was wondering if they had a chance, the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee had a chance to actually fully express all their ideas because at the end we were pretty rushed. So I would ask them and say, hey, have we fully, you know, has this meeting met your expectations? Have you expressed everything that you set out to, first of all? And then I would like to make a decision quickly to get rolling on this because it's been in the works for a long time and let's get our questions answered and gather the data like Tyler said and then let's move on it, I say. So, but I want to make sure that, because um, we didn't talk as much about long-term um, bonding, you know, in future, that, you know, we only spent two minutes on that at our little meeting today. So I would like to make sure they've been heard. No, I thought it, I thought it was a really good meeting. A lot of information. I certainly still have a lot of questions, and they're big financial decisions to make where, you know, I felt like maybe there was a little bit more information that I personally needed to, to kind of sift through it. But, um, but you know, I'm, I'm excited to see our parks program evolve and grow. And it's been a long time since we've done anything. We've kind of been in a holding pattern for a long time. So I'm excited to, you know, to, to see what we can do. Um, I'm, 
I'm eager to, to do something, but I definitely want to, I would rather wait until I have all the information before rushing to any decision because we're not, we're not really, as we talked about, even if we made a decision today, it would be a year and a half, two years before we saw something. So I don't feel as rushed to make a decision because we're not really in a position to move ground yet. So I'd rather wait till we had all the information we needed and could make a really educated, informed decision and take in information and, and um, hear a little bit more from the Parks Board for sure. No, and, that, and as the, the liaison to the Parks Board, please, I, mean, I wanna be able to take back your questions and, and get, put that on, on them as well to vet those pieces as well. Like I said at our meeting, it's, it's the first of many that mm -hmm. we've gotta do in terms of parks. Um, you know, this, this isn't gonna be something that we're gonna flip a switch on overnight and, and all of our park woes are handled and, and everything's being taken care of the, the way that we want them to and it takes take some time. So, um, but I, I have a kind of started a laundry list as well during our meeting and I know Councilor Parker was um, feverishly scribing um, during the meeting as well. So I, I suspect that um, there'll be a, a lot of ideas and, and pieces that we need to circle back with uh, staff on to get clarification on as well as the parks board yeah yes mr. mayor and I just want to encourage everybody to do get your questions into the mayor uh, clearing the air as quick as we can getting our questions answered uh, get that impediment out of the way and also um, uh, I appreciate the time to turn in written comments it's going to give me a chance I think to write down and get solidified in my mind. Councillor Parker and I have been talking some on the side, I don't think out of turn, but some on the side about, I, I'm not sure, we're not sure, I, I'll say I'm not sure that the council over the years has done a great job of giving that committee good direction either in where our passions and our interests are. And you touched on it tonight though very well about let's think 10,000 people ahead and let's think uh, 2030 uh, in terms of years and so, uh, yeah, been mulling around some things I'd like to get to you on where I'd like this to kind of help steer some of the thinking of the committee as well. Well, and and I appreciate that because I, I think when I, I'd agree on some of the, what have we done mm -hmm. to provide that direction? And I think, um, I think that could be said for a number of our boards yeah. and committees. Um, and a lot of that, and it's, I, I think it's just we're at that time. Yeah. I don't think it's anything that we haven't done or we've neglected to do. I think, um, I'm not sure who I was talking about it with. It might have been <laughs> Councilor Parker uh, and, and Rick, but we've been in execution mode. Mm -hmm. So all the a lot of the things that we've been doing and implementing have were put out in the late 90s, yeah. you know, mid to late 90s, and we've been executing that plan. So now it's what is the next plan what do we want to put together and get out there and start putting in in motion truly for 20 30 years down the road mm -hmm. and so it does take a lot of conversation and i know bike and pet have, uh the bike and pet community have been very proactive in seeing and engaging and weighing in on county things that impact here and you know wanting to meet and move some of those pieces along and um you know so I, again, I think there's a, a number of boards and committees that we need to have these conversations with as well coming up, but uh, I think yeah. we're just at that time. It's we're time to pull time. these plans off the shelf, revisit them, I mean, everything. Let's talk about the logging trail bridge. Let's talk about the 99E plan. I mean, that's those are plans that we've had. Let's dust them off, put our spin on them, and see if it's, you know, yeah. what we can start moving forward on, so. Council right. I am concerned though that if we keep on saying that we're going to hang out at the 30,000 level, it's important, but I also think the short term here and now is important too so that we don't get kind of stuck there, which I think we've kind of been stuck there because we didn't have the funds, the revenue coming in to actually do something. I mean, you know, the deferred and the future maintenance. So I just think, okay, 30,000 is great, but also very short term. Let's execute something in the short term. I mean, let's put something on the calendar in two weeks. I think we should give ourselves a timeline if if we're saying this is the first of many meetings then let's put them on the calendar let's let's give ourselves deadlines and and i agree I agreed um on the deadline piece but as ross was talked about tonight there's metric pieces and data points that we don't know 
like one of the notes that I have here in terms of um, you know, cost of the deferred maintenance fees. Yet we we know we have some guideline on what that's that cost is, but there's still an ongoing piece. I think to Sarah's point, when you add on a park and we have a five dollar maintenance fee that sunsets in five years, then what? You know, we, that's a piece that we've got to we right. have to take into consideration True. before we take on a park that requires 250 hours of labor a year. Right. We just we didn't get to that in the discussion today because our meeting was cut short. So we didn't get to we the just, what do we do after the five I'm, years? Well, that was that wasn't the intent of the meeting. We we wouldn't have had that would have been a four hour meeting in our own right if we wanted to cover everything that we wanted to have. So that was not gonna, we wouldn't have touched that no matter what tonight. So that's just, there's too much, there's a lot still yet to be talked about and worked through that we would have not touched upon, you know, that aspect tonight. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And like the data that's lacking, I guess, can we, I feel like we're kind of in this nebulous area, like can we put some sort of, I don't know, a deadline on it? Like by this date, let's have, is it possible to get these data points? Well, or how, you know what I mean? Well, like that's I'm to Tyler Smith's point of like that. what, it, it's lining up what are those pieces of information that we want to know. So I, I need to know that from you guys. Right. So that I can go to Rick and say, you know, here's what the council needs. How much time is that going to take for you to put that together? So, you know, so because again, parks is not the only piece that's on city staff's plate right now or on ours, and so we've got to. I've got to work with Rick to make sure that we're not dumping this huge bucket on them and want this information in two weeks when it's four weeks to put it together or more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You're not satisfied with that, though. No, I, it's a, I understand I, being respectful, but I just want to make sure that we don't sit on it too long. That's that's my point. So, and I don't know if uh, I don't know if Rick has anything to add to that timeline-wise. Well, in 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 looking at at uh, deferred maintenance and ongoing park maintenance costs, we're going to have two extremes. One extreme is going to be national average, and we can provide you that information, and you're going to see that we run at 50 to 70% of the national average. Probably, maybe not quite that high, but uh, for, for like or similar types of parks. And then, um, and then we're going to have to take the, the larger look, um, and Councillor Smith touched very specifically on this, at what it will take for the city of Canby applying our standard, not the national standard. We can give you the national standard, and we will. So, so here's here's your upper limit. Now, what do we actually have to work with? And it's going to be something less than that. And uh, and and that's really where we I think we'll we'll need to land. I think it's equally important. One of the the conversation topics that we just barely touched on today, but I think it is of critical importance, is is a charge that that you have passed on to the park and rec committee and that is what level of maintenance should we be doing in the parks and uh and that's an important is actually a very key and pivotal point that we're going to need to resolve they're going to need to recommend and you're going to have to determine at a level of policy because they can only make recommendations you adopt policy um, you're going to have to determine as a matter of policy if that's an appropriate level uh, and and that will drive every other decision that you make respecting parks okay that sounds good. That sounds like that's, I mean, that's something that we could do. That seems like something that we could do in the short term, this group in the parks advisory, right? Establish what we think with the new parks um, director, et cetera, what level or standard that we think is acceptable and right. Well, you, I think you're, you've got three steps to accomplish that. Um, the, the first is, is to, uh, is to gather together that national information, and I believe that Matilda has it available to us, so we can get that rel relatively easily. Apply that to the current parks that we have, 
and also to the parks that may be on the drawing board, look at that standard in comparison with what we're doing. This is the second part. Look at that standard in comparison with what we're doing in our parks. Are we at 50% in terms of, and then the, the uh, calculation is typically man hours. How many staff hours, person hours, would it take to maintain a park of X number of acres if this is the practical use for that park? Once you make that determination, then look at where we are in terms of our own analyses and what percentage are, are we completing. Then the final, uh, or not the final, the next step is to take that information to the body that you appointed to do this work, which is the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. And, and you're doing something now, and I applaud you, uh, that's going to be a little bit hard for you to do, and that you're gonna have to step back and let the Parks Committee do their work and come up with, with answers and recommendations based on this information. This will be interesting information to you until you get a proposal for a recommended direction from the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. So you may wanna see this in two weeks, but, but it's really not going to be meaningful to you as a policymaker until the committee that you have appointed for this express purpose has an opportunity to review and recommend a course of action. Thank you. Yeah. I, I harped on this before when we had our earlier session, that we still have not decided how we're going to decide. I see four components going into a decision on a park. Uh, the original cost, uh, the time it takes to bring it online, uh, the ongoing maintenance costs, and the value and impact of that. I don't think all four of those are equally weighted. Oh, right. And I don't think we agree on which of those are, are weighted. And so we can have a recommendation in front of us, but we haven't decided how we're going to decide on this. I don't see us doing a binary thing of saying, okay, here's the report from the uh, parts uh, committee, uh, up or down, yes or no. I, I see us applying some of our citywide and, and other issues involved in it as well. I don't think we've decided what it is we're going to use to make these decisions by. So we can have a decision presented to us, but, but we still haven't decided, and, and maybe you guys have, have different metrics than I do, but cost, time to bring online, because I, I heard that tonight, that made sense, of showing some impact of what people are being taxed for. Ongoing maintenance costs and the value and impact, because some of the parks will have greater impact than others. So given that, each one of these proposals that the Parks Committee came to us has different, a f different formula and a different answer to that. And until I've come up with a way for me to evaluate it, then all I can do is how I feel about them. And that's not a way to make policy. But you don't agree with the metrics that the Park Board used? They laid them out in terms of, I think three of, or four, three of the ones that you outlined maybe. I did not, I did did not see how many people will be using these parks. I did not see value impact. Uh, they didn't know uh, the ongoing maintenance. Uh, they had an estimate of the cost, didn't, had a rough estimate of time. But then they didn't do a comparison on one to the other. So I, I still think there's some preparation work before we can make a decision. Just my, just my piece on this. Thank you. Any other thoughts or comments? Uh, impose a deadline on us to get back mm -hmm. to you. Um, Knowing that we'll start it the night before, so. <laughs> 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 Today is the 18th, and I know what my next two weeks look like. Um, you got a calendar in front of you, the Greg? I do. What do you need? What do you want to know on the calendar? Thanks. <laughs> Let's say Friday, May 4th. May 4th? You got it. May the 4th. With you. Thank you. Good. Um, Mayor Hudson, would it be appropriate or okay with you if I'm copied on those and then I can help compile them as they come in? Great. Okay, Unless you want to pre-filter all of our stuff so he doesn't have to see the chat. 
It's up to you. You're providing that they're saying that there's going to be chaff. Let, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. He knows he's going to I know. How about a few forward me? I will forward relevant. from you, uh, yeah. from the group here. And yeah, we'll, just we'll, forward what's relevant. You can and so. Yeah, so well, that will be... And remember, please just send them all to, to Brian and not serial yeah. respond to each other. How about we do this? Thanks. Thursday night, May 3rd, by 9 p.m., because that's when I get back from C4, okay? And then Rick and I will go over them at our Friday morning oh, meeting. That's a good idea. Okay, I will. May 3rd. That's good. Okay. Print them out. He and I will go through them. Adorable. And we'll find out all the common themes. We'll just. Or and not. an invitation in the morning. Perfect. Okay. Very good. I think that takes care of my list. Uh, we'll move into uh, council, li uh, council comments and liaison reports. Councilor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, planning Commission has been canceled. French Prairie is next week. Uh, Fire District had a work session um, at the same time as our last city council meeting. Chief is here. I don't know if you have any anything special to report, Chief. You want to? It's been a while, a few months since we got a special appearance. So. Not that long, but close. Hey, as uh, Councilman Smith has mentioned, is uh, the uh, we did have a work session last Wednesday. That's so we do really do appreciate the fall prevention proclamation, which is very important to the fire district and preventing injuries from falling out the windows, of course. Um, but the work session was on a meeting with a consultant, Campbell DeLong and Associates, and uh, this Friday we're going to be meeting with them again. They're preparing a series of questions to poll the citizens of the fire district in looking at the need for a capital bond to improve fire stations uh, and looking at specific issues as it relates to a uh, station in the rural area, the old fire station out on Highway 170, whether or not that should be upgraded or moved. And also addressing, we've heard numerous concerns for the need for an EMS uh, fire station, not fire station, but an EMS station of some sort on the north end of town with the concerns of the railroad always going through town. And the board really does want to know the citizens' input on that. And so uh, Campbell DeLong would do uh, a polling of 300 and then provide this information back to the board so that they can make a decision as to whether or not to proceed with the bond and if they do, how much. Uh, we made recommendations to them, and so I really do appreciate them taking that stance and moving forward and finding out what the citizens feel before making that decision. Another hand is uh, board member uh, Don Deppner uh, is, has, is moving out of the fire district, and so we will be losing her as a board member, which is going to be a tremendous loss uh, from our board. Don has been with us for eight years and has seen through uh, numerous changes at the fire district. And so I personally am gonna miss her as well as the other board members are gonna miss her and her input. And however, she is still gonna be running Operation Snuggle, you know, mm -hmm. so we will continue to help out Don uh, with that. But she's already been recruited by the Aurora Fire District as a board <laughs> member <laughs> in Aurora. So she called me the other night asking me my opinion about that. I said, that's your decision. <laughs> So our budget committee uh, is meeting next Wednesday prior to the Board of uh, Directors meeting. That starts at 7 o'clock. We're at the fire district. Uh, we do have a balanced budget to present to our, uh, to our budget committee. Uh, so, and then following the budget committee will be the normal council meeting. Uh, good news is the levy that the citizens had passed to increase our levy by 11 cents uh, to provide uh, additional uh, transports during the daytime hours. I'm pleased to announce to you that uh, we tried that out. We weren't satisfied with the amount of second EMS transports that we were getting out because that was being staffed as we told the citizens it would be five days a week for 10 hours and uh, we weren't meeting what we wanted to see. So we changed things up staffing wise. We now are staffing that second medic unit and getting it out 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
And just an ex as an example, in the first three months of this year, we only had to have an outside transport agency come into Canby five times in three months, whereas the year before, we were over 35. So that is a significant improvement in regards to the operations of providing service to the citizens and getting them to the hospital sooner. So we're very proud of that. We are seeing significant increases of not only two calls happen at one time, but uh, the last month or so we've had five calls happen at one time uh, as far as EMS calls go. So it's really stretching us and challenging us on how to make these transports and respond to medical emergencies. I know I personally in the middle of the night have been up and responding to medical emergencies where we've had four at one time at two o'clock in the morning. So it's really interesting to see how the growth is impacting the fire district and how we deliver our service. So it is challenging us, uh, but uh, it's all working out very well, but we are very happy to announce that we have fulfilled what we told the taxpayers we'd do with that 11 cents. So um, our board of directors have done a wonderful job in supporting us and moving that uh, project forward. We are starting two new firefighters uh, due to retirements in a, in a vacancy. They'll be starting May 1st, and so they'll be going through a year probationary period and training. And it's that time of year again for fireworks. So um, we are soliciting donations so that we can, we have signed the contract, we have put the down payment down for this year's fireworks display. Uh, so if anybody's interested in donating to fireworks uh, display again this year, uh, we are raised, trying to raise $15,000 again. And uh, Western Fireworks has promised uh, yet an upgrade from last year's and last year's show was wonderful. Yeah, last year was really good. So if you're interested, just contact the fire district and the Volunteer Firefighters Association is running that again this year. Thank you very much, unless you have any questions. Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you, you. Chief. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Chief Davis, I will give you my fireworks check before you leave tonight. Uh, Great. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Councilor Smith. Councilor Parker. And uh, Chief, uh, you mentioned about how our growing population is changing your response. And you know how I love big data. So uh, I'd love to see an analysis of uh, in the future at some point of of how our changing population is is changing your responses of what the effects of that growth are. Well, we would love to present that. I'll work with your city administrator and see if we can get a short period of time at one of your council meetings to go over, we'll go over our annual report that we just presented to our board. It would help us understand our city a little bit better and and, and what, what new people are bringing new challenges are. Because because I, I we don't have an easy way to grab some of that information and that would be slick. We would love to provide it to you. All right, thanks. You bet. Uh, Mr. Mayor, for me, uh, the uh, Bike Committee meets next Tuesday, and the Heritage and Landmark Committee uh, meets in May, but I have a coolest story. <laughs> okay. uh, in Bend, last week, a uh, statewide uh, commission on uh, uh, historic landmarks, keynote speaker, first thing out of her mouth, let me tell you about the best community in Oregon. Canby, Oregon just started a women's heritage trail. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Very nice. Cool. I like it. Councilor Hensley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Jamie mentioned that to me. She was pretty tickled. I was like, well, that's something to be proud of, honey. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, Traffic Safety Commission, uh, we had a citizen concern brought to the school district, actually. So we had a couple of representatives, um, the principal of Trost and vice principal of Baker Prairie um, came and presented what the citizen's concern was. And um, we took all the information in our heads and actually referred them to the Bike and Ped Committee. These, it was primarily crosswalk improvements. and. Um, Jennifer, who attends our meetings, our public works director, also recommended maybe that they pursue the Safe Routes to School grants and things. So she kind of um, steered them that direction. Um, one member did actually bring up the Art Road extension, and there was a little fevered discussion about that and how it might impact us, and I 
just kind of said, well, this has been talked about for 20 years. We don't need to get in a, a kerfuffle about it right now, but we can keep it on the radar. Um, and then how, ideas on how to be more meaningful and in input and feedback during the planning process. And in our parks meeting, actually, something was said that the parks board gets or no, sorry, no, Councillor Parker said that the bike and ped um, committee gets the development plans as they're coming into the planning. Is there a way that, does the, does the Traffic Safety Commission and the Parks Board get that as well? Or just the bike and ped? Um, actually, the, the parks get them too. It's not as they're coming in, but it's as soon as they're vetted and ready to move on to the next level and we know that we have a project then it goes forward. But before um, it hits the planning commission. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a way we could get the traffic safety committee on Absolutely. that loop as well? Absolutely. Because I know that they would really like to analyze these and be able to provide their recommendations or their concerns to the planning commission and they kind of feel a little behind the curve. So Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. Mayor and I were just talking later this afternoon about uh, the need probably on a semi-annual basis to get to invite all of our committees together and where there's overlap provide an opportunity for those committee members to work together on issues of common interest. So we're, we'll be working up some plans to, to start bringing our, our city committees into a central forum for, for a more open discussion, offering cookies and punch or something to stimulate their, their uh, attendance, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, yes, we can do that. And uh, even more than that, uh, we've got some, some ideas for, for formalizing a process to make sure that the committees are actually talking to each other too. Excellent, I like it. Okay, I'll be glad to report that to them as well. Um, you already covered C4 very well, Mr. Mayor. Um, so although the, the only other thing is I did meet with the Suicide Perfection Prevention Task Force, just a couple of us met actually last week to kind of plan next week's meeting and at the next council meeting in a couple of weeks I'll have a, a fuller report of what the task force activities have been and, and kind of what the status of that project is. And that is all I have. Great. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Council President Dale. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the camp utility front, uh, construction at our new headquarters at 4th and Pine is on time and on budget. Always nice to hear. They're anticipating moving in in June. Uh, it's not a total move in. Uh, it'll be just the downtown staff initially of nine folks will be going over there. Uh, but it's a much bigger building than that because it's much cheaper to build it all and pour all the concrete in one, as Rick can tell us, and they'll actually populate the utility side at a later date. Uh, we had a bit of a windstorm here a couple weekends ago, and Camby Utility is proud to announce that they had no service interruptions uh, due to the wind, which was great. It, they were a little nervous as PGE was having interruptions all around us, but their feeders were not affected and all of Camby Utilities stayed up. If you have a home irrigation system for your lawns, you've probably received a notice to check your backflow, and we're all shaking our heads have done that. Uh, they have uh, worked very diligently with the state um, it is the, uh, I can't say the name of it now, Rick, you've said it 50 times to me, it's the health authority in the end, actually governs uh, backflow requirements. No, it's uh, Oregon Health Authority. It's in, oh, yeah. does that sound right, OHA? So don't send cards and letters to Canby Utility that you hate backflow testing. It's mandated by the state. But to date, they are up to 95% uh, compliance and people turning their reports in. So it's actually worked out really well. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you already covered the budget committee. Uh, I just wanted to note, uh, thanks to some wonderful citizens and their willingness to be involved for the first time in years, both budget committees are at full staff uh, with citizen members. So that's very good. Uh, and last, I attended the Peace Poll dedication, the new Peace Poll right out here in the plaza. Attended that last week, and our thanks to the local Rotary chapter for putting that together. Uh, if you were here that day, they, they had a display out on the wall. It looks, looks like it's down now, as soon as I can tell, of messages, poems, artwork, and such that the local school children did uh, regarding that. And Chief, I'm right, those are placed in the poll now, right? Very good. So they're actually in, in there. So again, thanks to the Rotary. Thanks, Chief, for making it happen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilor Height. Yes, it's a rare occurrence indeed. I don't actually have anything to share. I know. The, uh, the library board didn't have a quorum. Too many people were on vacation. 
actually. Yeah, that's funny. But I look forward to seeing the peace poll. I haven't even noticed it, so I'm going to go spy on it, look at it after this meeting. Thanks for the reminder. Right there, yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Councilor Spoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's kind of fun, actually. I started noticing peace polls all over the place. <laughs> yeah. We drove, I don't remember That's where we were headed last person. night or whatever, but I saw one on McLaughlin down at by the Ross Island Bridge, and I was like, oh, that's what that white thing is. Like, now, <laughs> now I can place it, but they're, they're all over the place. It's really interesting. It's a neat addition to our community. Um, the Kimby Adult Center is having their plant sale this Saturday. Um, as you know, over the years, they've kind of scaled it down to smaller plants because there's such a large plant show at the fairgrounds, but it's still a great addition to the community and if you're looking for uh, smaller plants it can be potted or you can have in your home or your yard the plant sales at the adult center this Saturday and then um, Todd Gary from the fire department will be doing a falls prevention class on May 13th at the adult center which is really great they do it's in conjunction um, I believe with balance and harmony I think it's the name of the business over um, in our downtown and they go over not just tips for preventing falls but exercises that you can do that help you um, strengthen your core to avoid falls to begin with um, and then CTV5 is uh, kind of revamping some of their equipment as they've been doing here. We're getting it so that it's gonna be easier and um, more consistent to have live feeds of our city council meetings, recordings, but they're also um, getting it all set up so they can continue to do live TV. And I don't know if anyone has noticed, but they've been doing live filming of lacrosse games. So they're trying to set it up so that they can do more sporting events. They're hoping to air Canby graduation ceremony live this year um, and some stuff like that. So it's really neat the way they They've been organizing it so that, that um, they can do that. And they've also added a community board on CTV5 where you can submit anything from birthdays to community events, announcements, stuff like that, where it will then play on CTV5. So if you have anything like that, you can add it. Um, they are also... Uh, Gordon expressed in the meeting that they have a lot of people coming now with content ideas, shows they'd like to do, but they are horribly deficient in the number of people that are able or willing to come in and record and edit that content. And content is, of course, the driver for public TV, so um, they're definitely looking for people that have an interest in learning how to use the equipment, get trained on it. Um, record and edit in the studio so that we can add that content to CD to, to CTV5 and I did ask him and it does you can get service hours for the high school for it so if you have a high school student that's interested in media it might be a good way for them to get some service hours towards their graduation credit to go in and get trained on the equipment and maybe record and edit some TV shows and um, and he expressed that there might even be a way to get college credit on it, depending on what your class is, but I don't know anything about that. So you talk to Gordon if you're interested, because it seems like there might be a way to get some additional credit. And then finally, on Saturday, um, I attended the Canby Center's 10th anniversary um, dinner at the Country Club. And I can't, I, it's hard to believe it's been here for 10 years, but it was really neat to kind of see a recap of what all they've done in the last 10 years in terms of just service to the community. They've, they've doubled their food donation last year from the year before, and they think they might double it again this year. Um, and there's such a great addition to, to the community. Everything they do, their reading mentors program, um, clothing donations, it's pretty extraordinary. So um, it was really nice to see them make it to 10 years and kind of what their vision is moving forward. They're getting a new commercial kitchen so they can uh, serve food there in a better capacity. And yeah, so it was just really, it was a, it was a fun thing to celebrate. They're really great. Sarah? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move into the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the minutes of the April 4th, 2018 City Council work session and regular meeting and the reappointment of Kelly Harms to the Heritage and Landmark Commission for a term to expire on June 30th, 2021. Thank you. The motion has been made by Council President Dale and taken by Council Hensley to, to approve the consent agenda. That includes the adoption of the minutes of the April 4th, 2018 City Council work session and regular meeting and the reappointment of Kelly Harms to the Heritage and Landmark Commission for a term to expire on June 30th, 2021. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That carries 6-0. Uh, moving into resolutions and ordinances. There are none. We're done with that. Uh, there is no new business this evening. Rick, the Administrator's Business and Staff Report. Uh, nothing more at this time. Okay. 
Second opportunity for citizen input, if anybody would like to provide said input. No? Okay. Action review. You've approved the consent agenda. <laughs> and so much hour. more. <laughs> uh, Joe, do we have an exec session this evening? We do not. Okay. Great. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilor Hensley and seconded by Councilor Height to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone want to hang out? We do have, we to, have to. We have oh, to. Oh, we do. <laughs> uh, so stay tuned for urban renewal meeting that will take place here shortly. Uh, that motion passes 6 0. We are adjourned. It's a consent. All right, we're done. Yeah. All right, I'll now call to order. 18th 2018 if it's the pleasure of the agency I'd like to ride on the opening ceremonies of the council meeting definitely Absolutely. thank you very much uh, we have an opportunity for citizen input and community announcements anybody wish to address the agency and seeing none we'll move on our next order of business is the consent agenda Mr. Chair, I move to adopt the consent agenda, which include the minutes of the June 21st, 2017 Urban Renewal Agency Special Meeting, minutes of the August 16th, 2017 Urban Renewal Agency Work Session, minutes of the January 17th, 2018 Urban Renewal Agency Work Session, the minutes of the March 3rd, 2018 Urban Renewal Agency Work Session, and appointment of Jennifer Trundy to the Urban Renewal Budget Committee for a term to end on June 30th, 2021. It's been moved by Vice Chair Hodson, seconded by Commissioner Hensley to accept the consent agenda, which is the minutes of the June 21st, 2017 Urban Renewal Agency Special Meetings, the minutes of the August 16th, 2017 Urban Renewal Agency Work Session, the minutes of the January 17th, 2018 Urban Renewal Agency Work Session, the minutes of the March 3rd, 2018 Urban Renewal Agency Work Session, and the appointment of Jennifer Trendy to the Urban Renewal Budget Committee for a term to end on June 30th, 2021. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 7 0. Uh, Mr. Agency Administrator, is there any other business for the uh, No other agency business tonight? this evening. All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Actually, I have a question, actually. Oh, sorry. Can I yep. be before? I'm not sure why we're approving these minutes now. Like, why now? We save up the minutes until there's um, a meeting so that we don't call a meeting just to approve the minutes and then have minutes from that meeting that then roll forward uh, but they also the main task tonight was to approve Jennifer for the budget committee I see so. okay gotcha is yeah. that an okay explanation Kim okay good thank you <laughs> um, oh second to your motion Tracy do adjourn <laughs> all right it's been moved by Commissioner Hensley seconded by Commissioner Height that we adjourn all in favor say aye, aye. and that passes 7-0 good night Camby we are adjourned <laughs> <laughs>